Hello and welcome to the podcast Lotus Eaters for the 4th of October 2022. I'm joined by Harry. Hello. And today we're going to be talking about how refusing gender ideology is terrorism, UK money madness, and also Kanye West comes out as a white man. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> God bless, finally. So I suppose we'll start with refusing gender ideology is terrorism. So the uh, American system of tradition of censorship is going in full swing. If you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, because you might have thought America as a place of freedom and, you know, Second Amendment stuff and all the rest of it, that does all the hard work protecting the first. Iron However, ironically, you say, you say, oh, the tradition of uh, censorship. I think uh, only a few years in something like 1798, a few years after the Constitution was ratified, one of the presidents, I forget exactly which one, put in a sedition act. I'm not surprised that early statements, but... In the modern era, you might have thought this would be ridiculous, but uh, no, because you remember during COVID, the US government worked with the social media giants. It has now been released, documented that they were the ones who were banning everyone. Like, literally, the government was asking, can you censor this person on Instagram? Zuckerberg said so. Yeah, and we have the emails back just saying, yeah, no problem. And then they did it. <laughs> and um, this is now going to be expanded to anyone who refuses gender ideology because they're a terrorist these days. Starting off, of course, just with an article on lotusias.com from... Uh, Will Nolan, The Universal Asset of Liberalism, which I'm going to be taken from because it's uh, very relevant to what I'm going to be talking about, which is that, well, if you're truly a liberal, you must believe in the fact that you can escape reality itself because reality is oppressing you. Or at least this is how modern leftists see themselves in that vein. So we'll start off with, uh, we go to the next link here, in which we can see the newest news being from Lives of TikTok, just giving us an update on American schools. Are they still the same? Yeah, they are. It just seems to keep going on. As previously reported, an NEA has been distributing safe space badges to teachers across the country. The badge has a QR code that leads to sites containing sexually explicit content. Fantastic. I did see a meme about all of this, just the, the endless drivel that comes out that we see of just, like, you know, going for a job interview and the person's like, hmm, yes, I am a sexual degenerate and mentally ill. Oh, congratulations, you're going to be a teacher. Like, that's the career's advice at this point. I'm not even going to go into this individual. It's just as normal as norm. And if we go to the next image, we can see the average American school with its big old board containing information about sexuality and gender, as they usually do. Yeah, traditional things, traditional American things. But that's not the big news. The big news is that the Biden administration is now going to presumably take the advice of, as we can see here, the American Medical Association, which is the, hmm, do you not like any of this? Do you not like that we're transitioning your kids? Well, it's terrorism. How dare you say such things? I mean, they've they've already tried that sort of, uh, that sort of thing after the parents were complaining at parent teacher association meetings. So I'm not surprised that it's going further now. Yeah, now they have the medical establishment on their side. Why might the medical establishment do this? Um, money, uh, Mr. Krabs, literally. <laughs> <laughs> L literally, I wonder if there's any massive amounts of money to be made in transitioning surgeries. Yeah, we we've gone over this with Matt Walsh's independent journalism, which uh, yeah, uh, the the entire surgery department can keep themselves afloat just with the uh, what is it, the penis plasties. Whatever yeah, they call them. I, I think one Crown of the best parties. things to note from that, and I think it's also noted in Irreversible Damage, the book by Abigail Schreier as well that I've covered, and you can check out the coverage of that on the premium website, is that once you have gone through the surgery, it's not a one-time thing. You don't just go through the surgery and, congrats, you're a man now, you're a woman now. No, you're a patient for life, which means a, a nice, steady, recurring source of income. Which is very good. And that's why if we go into this... Uh article here we can see the american medical association is asking big tech and department of justice to censor deplatform investigate and prosecute journalists who question the orthodoxy of radical gender surgeries for minors arguing that uh, public criticism is disinformation and he's not joking he's highlighted the section here that is relevant that starts off with dear attorney general garland coordinated attacks threaten federally protected rights to health care for patients and their families the attacks are rooted in an intentional campaign of disinformation, where a few high-profile users on social media share false and misleading information targeting individual physicians or hospitals, such as video evidence of your discussions internally, saying about how much money you're making off all of this. I mean, I, I'm sorry, that's not disinformation. V video evidence of you discussing how much money you're making from this and how you're going to continue doing this because it makes so much money. Well, video evidence and then also recorded calls that somebody like Libs of TikTok, for instance, has personally made to get information saying, by the way, are you willing to transition kids under 18 years old? Well, we don't do it often, but yes, we are. That's misinformation, Harry. I know it's an audio recording of reality, but that's um, 
How it's also works. terrorism. It's an obvious attempt to get those hospitals bombed. That's exactly <laughs> what Libs of TikTok intended all along. Our organizations have called technology companies to do more to prevent this. Practice on digital platforms. And we now urge your office to take swift action and to investigate and prosecute all organizations, individuals, and entities responsible. So not only do we want all of Facebook, Twitter, etc. to delete all these folks, pointing out that you are doing what you're doing, and you're doing it for cash, and now you want the government to step in and also just prosecute people. Literally just criminalizing opposition. Yeah. I, I don't know what to say. I, I mean, the thing is, like, you might think, oh, pff, they'll never do that. Except they did during COVID. I, I mean, we have the emails released and have gone through previously where the uh, the government literally just wrote to Facebook and whatnot and said, yeah, delete these people off the internet. They just make, the, make these dis opinions bro. illegal. <clears throat> so Mark uh, says in here, this is how the left's playbook goes. Last year, the National School Board Association, Department of Justice, and FBI worked together to label parents who opposed critical race theory domestic terrorists. They want to stifle dissent, suppress speech, and criminalize opposition. Yeah, 100%. This is exactly what they're doing. I don't know why else you would send a letter to the administration saying, yeah, can you stop prosecuting anyone who calls out what we're doing by showing video evidence of us discussing it in private? Don't you know the public weren't meant to see those? I did like even Andrew Sullivan responds in here saying, evidence-based gender-affirming care equals experimental off-label sex change drugs, not FDA-approved for children with natural puberty. Like, yeah, yeah, that is, that is what's going on. And, and once again, just to reaffirm, in the states where people are a bit more safeguarded against these sorts of things where the medical establishment isn't going to just hand over the hormones and treatment and surgeries as easily as they are in, say, a state like California, there are still independent actors online, some of whom I've had run-ins with, who are making hormones in bathtubs, DIY hormones, and sending them illegally through the American postal system um, without parents' knowledge, permission to, you, you know, young minors. And they're not the terrorists. We're breaking bad now on hormones. <laughs> Literally, that's what's going on. I mean, there's no RVs involved. It's mainly just bathtubs. Jesse, we're going to transition kids, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. White. <laughs> you I took stop too much <laughs> testosterone, Mr. White. Stop it, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's, that's what's happening. These people aren't domestic terrorists these people aren't you know being prosecuted by the uh, establishment and institutions no it's the people saying maybe let's not do that yeah and it's their pre-stop breaking bad <laughs> <laughs> but you can all sit here just christopher making the point it's like oh let's ask our local fascism experts on lefty journo to tell us whether or not this is fascism having the state literally collude with collab corporations to shut down all opposition yeah it is in case you're wondering however you might also think well, you know, that's maybe just uh, the hospitals, so I can, I can live without that. No, there's a lot of other things that, of course, will become terrorism in due time. Other things that, of course, come from gender ideology. The funniest of news stories about this in the United States I saw was this, which I'm going to enjoy. Two gay men, who both attended law school, filed a legal complaint against the city of New York, arguing that not having access to a woman's reproductive potential is a form of discrimination, and that they are entitled to have the city pay for a surrogate. Now, I don't want to sound like an insufferable leftist here, but where are the people saying Handmaiden's Tale? They say that about everything right-wingers do uh, in regards to women's rights and uh, other such things, but not, not when it's two gay men saying we literally have the right to own your womb. The, these two chaps are, are very strange, and I'm not going to go into their background. You don't say! I'm, <laughs> I'm shocked! <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think this is all in good faith, to say the least. However, no. the argument is genuinely funny, <laughs> because all right, when all you right. get down to it, you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I love the idea that like a, sorry, a gay right now is a right to a woman. <laughs> like, gay men are hoarding our women <laughs> no but you, can, you literally turn up to the New York uh, city and it's like yeah, yeah by the way I'm entitled to a woman because I'm, I'm gay I don't have a vagina so um, give me one <laughs> give it's me my, the womb baby and, and you're not even wrong though because um, they, the person says in here quote gay men now want insurance companies to treat being born male as a disability or as a protected category one which requires paid compensation they are protesting the unfairness of not being able to be born biologically female. Which... <laughs> so the gays have gone back to the 1950s, read some of the literature on gays and gone, these guys got a point. <laughs> I, I, well, these two chaps, <laughs> I'm eager to make that distinction because I think it is genuine. Yeah, no, no, but, no. But also the point here, which is, um, uh, yeah, why not? 
Why why is being in a gay relationship not kind of some discrimination against being gay? Why are they not oppressed? Why why shouldn't they have access to a woman? Gays discriminate right. gays by not having children with gays. Um, well, they can't have children with gays. Exactly. <laughs> Discrimination. They can always keep trying, though. Uh. Discrimination. I tell you what, Will's, <laughs> Will's, Will's article Will's argument. is absolutely right. It's just denying reality. Th- this is why I brought it up and why I think it's golden. I think Will is absolutely correct. People should go give that article I mentioned at the start a read. Because, again, this is liberation from reality itself. Reality of me as a gay man with my gay partner not being able to have children because none of us have a vagina is oppression. And therefore, I am entitled to access to a woman, which the state will pay for, <laughs> and she will be my surrogate. In I, uh, my basement. If, if no woman signs up for this, presumably we then have to start conscripting women, because well, surely that it would is a be, human right. It would be mass homophobia from the female sex. <laughs> would, you, you, <laughs> you don't want to be a surrogate for this gay relationship? Well, f- well pretty homophobic, ladies. Les- lesbians <laughs> not wanting to suck dick is now transphobia. Yeah. Therefore, women not wanting to have gay men's children is homophobia. It all makes sense. It's the acid of liberalism, man. It I, really I, is. I think Will then genuinely is correct. Uh, yep. The more they think about the article, the more I'm like, oh, that explains a lot. And uh, amazingly enough, hopping back over the pond to the UK, we've actually done something similar, which is the, as you can see here from Human Rights Watch, remember it's a human right to get away from reality itself, mm-hmm. England to end LBQ plus discrimination in access to fertility services. Coverage for single women and transgender people remains unclear, which uh, we'll get back to some other point, I guess, to fix the reality again. So they, they've uh, <laughs> so they've left out the gays and the trans here. Yeah, because we can't we have we haven't got to New York levels of well, a gay right to a woman is a gay right, which I I'm, okay. <laughs> I, I'm not saying that this such app- a weird statement. I'm like. not saying that this applies to every gay couple, but I have seen a few sus stories in the news recently about gay couples with adopted children. Well, there was um the worst one. I, I forget the name. Oh, I'm gonna. I, I've completely forgotten it now. But people will put it in the chat. Um, there was that two, a lesbian couple in California who were big Bernie Bros. They would go yeah, to every so Bernie Bros. Yeah, you, I remember. These they adopted ones. like eight kids of various racial backgrounds, and they would take them to Bernie Bro protests and be like, "We're a happy family, even though we're all different races." Like a "Don't hug me, I'm scared" st- sketch. <laughs> And, and just like a don't, don't hug me, me I'm scared, scared <laughs> sketch, it ends horribly. Yeah, the, the two lesbians decided that the whole world was going to end because Donald Trump had been elected, so they, they put the kids in the minivan and drove into the sea. No, I think it was a bit more than just that. It was because of the fact that the Child Protective Services were starting to look into them because there were some very... They were insane. There were some very credible allegations of abuse coming from within that household. So instead of giving up the children, they decided to... Kill them all. Yeah. Anyway. And themselves. I'm not saying that's indicative or anything, but it's just that no, of course you know, not. there are some weird ideologues that engage in everything in the world. And I think the New York couple there probably are on the same vein of just like, what are you doing? It's a gay man's right to a woman. And like Literally the opposite. That's the whole point of being gay, I would have thought. <laughs> Get away from women, whatever. So the article in here says, same-sex female couples seeking one cycle of NHS funding for uh, veto fertilization are required to prove infertility by self-funding 12 rounds of artificial insemination, including six in clinical settings, costing approximately £26,000. Which, yeah, um, you're only entitled to this under the NHS if you're infertile. Whereas if you're not infertile, then this isn't, like, taxpayer's problem. I don't think it's a taxpayer's problem either way, but whatever. Like, it is what it is. And it's that way because, you know, women don't make sperm. What? I know, news. Um, This is a news channel, I'm told. (laughs) Scientific (laughs) discoveries. We're breaking some ground here. Yeah, so the lesbians were required to fund to see if they were infertile, and if they were infertile, then they get it for free, like the hetero couples. And for heterosexual couples, the requirement to prove infertility is two years of unprotected sex to prove that they're infertile. How do you... How do you prove it? What do you mean? Uh, how do you prove? I swear we've been having two years of. Un- do I you don't have think to- they're gonna check. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do they request video footage? Anyway, <laughs> do it right now in front of me. <laughs> yeah. But the point Impregnate being, her right now. Of course, there are differences. There's a differentiation between you know heterosexuals and homosexuals. In this case, lesbians, being that uh, heterosexuals can produce sperm and eggs together, and uh, the, the, the homosexual women. I'm can't. still not. I'm still not sure. I think we need to consult the science on this. Yeah, which I'm told um, tells us we're wrong. Which um, probably about it, the it, science. In, in a few months, it will probably say that actually women can produce sperm. In fact, it does already, doesn't it? Probably. I, I know it does actually. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. Because if trans women are women, then women can actually produce. 
But back to the point, which is differentiation is bad. We're not allowed to do that, of course. Oh, sorry, discrimination. We have to use the different words because if we actually say differentiation, we'll realize that all this is retarded. The new strategy removes the requirement for self-funding and states that female same-sex couples can now expect NHS coverage to start with six cycles of artificial insemination. So the heteros have to prove infertility, whereas the lesbians are infertile because of their sexuality, in this sense, it's literally impossible, so they just get it free. But the point there being, you may end up agreeing with that, perhaps, and in which case, why should the gay men not get state-funded waifus? <laughs> <laughs> They're also infertile by, by dint of being born gay. In which case, I'm sorry, NHS waifus have to come forward and start <laughs> serving gay men. I just, I don't know what to say. It's fantastic. I, mean, I love gender ideology. <laughs> We can't differentiate between anything anymore. So we all have to. We're just all just a nice, big, a massive grey blob. Mm. If you're a gay oh. couple in the chat. I want a state waifu. Let us know. <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember Futurama with the neutral planet where everybody's just neutral at everything? <laughs> That's what we're turning into. You're not allowed to be different. Everyone has to be no. neutral. Somebody, I know we're about to die. Somebody tell my wife I said hello. We can't. We can't tell any difference between men and women, and now we can't even tell differences between gays and straights. We have to just. Basically the same. Okay, right. Anyway, getting back to the gender ideology, because you may remember where we left off the story with mermaids the other day, in which they're being investigated for child abuse. Big shock. Yep, funny that. Gender ideologues, always doing this. Thanks, H Bomber guy, for all the money. Mermaids said in court that they do not give out medical advice. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> like, after all the medical advice you've been giving out. Yet in these documents to new patients who contact mermaids, they say binders are safe to wear for up to eight hours a day. Hormone blockers are reversible, which is pretty dangerous rhetoric for non-professionals. It's not just dangerous rhetoric, those are lies. Yeah, it's also criminal. Um, so there's that as well. However, you may wonder where the story went from there, because it seems to just get worse and worse for those folks in the UK. Well, pink news to the rescue. Oh, thank God. Someone is riding very... in on horseback, ready to re ready to beat off the hordes. <laughs> no, not like that. Uh, odd that choice was of words, Harry. <laughs> 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 At least said hordes. <laughs> <laughs> However, Pink News have decided that their favourite front group is under attack, and so they had to jump to defence. As you can see, they published articles like this: "What is chest binding, and how does it help LGBTQ people feel trans joy?" I, I, I. This... I'll get back to it in a minute, what no. I'm going to say about that. But I'll let you get through. <laughs> binders and the act of binding has horrified right-wing press. Yep, yeah, and every other press when it was happening in Cameroon, but here it's fine. But for trans people who've used a binder, it can be a vital step in their journey to affirmation of who they really are. There are some potential risks when using a binder. Really? I, I, I thought it was for trans joy. I didn't think there were any risks. I'm shocked they've even admitted that. Yeah. But charities such as Mermaids are also able to give advice on safe use and best practice. It's like, yeah, but they, they, they literally give wrong advice. They, they literally just say, it's perfectly fine, don't worry about it, bro. Eight hours a day will be the problems. Like, the, the irreversible damage. That'll be the problem. No, nope, never mind. Anyway, we get a quote from a 27-year-old public relations specialist from Oregon, USA. I don't know why they asked... A literal propagandist. Like, this is his... What do you think public relations is? <laughs> Whatever. And he comes out and says, uh, having a flat chest was incredible, beyond belief. <laughs> okay, we, we asked a literal propaganda agent, and that's what All he had right. to say. Wearing a binder helped him feel a bit more at ease just living in the world at large. But it was always a low moment to take it off at the end of the day. Wish I could do it all the time. I'm sorry. Right, okay, I've had enough of pink news. Not reading any more of that. Mo <laughs> most women I hear about uh, have a, a great deal of joy when they can get home and finally take their bras off, but... No, no, isn't it good to wear it all the time? Uh, like, a whole other distinction we'll get into in some other point. But pink news are also making adverts on their Instagram about this, which you can see there. Five ways to bind safely this summer. Don't. I thought, I thought it was safe. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't. Yeah, I don't know if you can click through the images there. Uh, John, just to get the family-friendly feel of the whole thing. Just the smiling cartoon character. You go to the next one. That just, just going horribly through. annoying corporate art style that you see everywhere. Yeah. Look at this. Look how joyous this is. Isn't this joyous? Isn't it fantastic? Appropriately it's chunky body proportions, though. It, it, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, like, all of this just reminds me of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Like <laughs> <laughs> You've just been watching that. I've just... been watching it a lot. It's on the brain. But to be honest, when you're interacting with stuff that looks just like it, it's just like, huh. Well, if you go to the next uh, link here, I don't know if you've got the the timestamp on... <laughs> Look how much water you could be full of. <laughs> <laughs> it's not 
Like, not just me, right? <laughs> That's like, so weird. You get the next link. We could we could see um the Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared episode. You remember this one? I don't know if you've seen it. This is the one where some like Yeah, no, uh, I remember this. This is where he goes up in his you, you you'll describe it better. You're more familiar. Yeah, so this uh, character turns up who who's a member of some love cult who wants everyone to join the cult, change their name, scrub their brain, and uh, become one of us. And he turns up advocating that the world's full of hate, but if you believe in love, come with me over the <laughs> rainbow. <laughs> And Why do you it, do such a good cartoon character voice? Oh, it'd be fun. <laughs> but it's just the fact of, um, yeah, they, they, I, I don't know if Don't Hug Me Rest Scared is actually secretly based, but to be honest, more and more I look at the episodes, I'm like, huh, some hidden messaging here I didn't expect. I feel like there is some <laughs> allegorical baseness possibly going on underneath. Yeah, there's some creepy sort of groomer psychopaths who keep turning up warning you about, oh, the whole world's full of hate, trust me, don't look into it. So come with me, we're the team of love. Now scrub your brain and change your name. It's literally a line. <laughs> I mean, that does sound shockingly relevant. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> getting back to that another time, we'll go forward back to Pink News, who are also running into the defense, as you can see here. Top surgery dramatically increases quality of life for young trans adults, study finds. Do you believe this? No. No. It's going to be a hard sell. No, because <laughs> some, some kind of your tits will be good for you. Something tells me that the science and those conducting these studies might be compromised. They might have an agenda they want to push. Not, not very uh, trusting. But, but it's just trust me. It's, it's, it's good for them. And having I... looked into a few trans, well, pro-trans studies myself, a lot of them have a few, shall we say, methodological issues. But if we move forward, we'll get to the next one because uh, the CEO of Pink News actually gets tied into all of this, as you can see here. So J.K. Rowling called him out. And so by the way, the CEO of Pink News, his husband's on the Mermaids board as a trustee, like he was in the past. It's like. Huh. Yeah, that might explain all the simping. Unbiased. Yeah. So uh, the CEO, Benjamin, here comes out and says, Now J.K. Rowling has mentioned me in a thread about this. Anthony was a trustee in Mermaids until he resigned many years ago. I have removed myself from her conversation as I have already received abuse. Like, right, okay. Yeah, we are receiving abuse. Someone mentioned you. Welcome to the internet. Someone said something mean about me online. Continues to whine. I've had to remove myself from another J.K. Rowling tweet following more abuse. <laughs> Yeah, being called out as abuse. Contrary to J.K. <laughs> Rowling's claims, barely any of the tens of thousands of content across Pink News ever mention her. She's obviously not that popular. I was like, huh, funny. Well, wow. mm. you can go to Pink News and just look up J.K. Rowling and then um, you, you, get, you get a few results. Just a few. Yeah, yeah, just a few more. <laughs> the abuse. <laughs> the abuse is unbearable. <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah, someone mentions you that as abuse, so you have been abusing J.K. Rowling for a long time, Mr. Benjamin. God, it goes on a bit. Anyway. Really does. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, is it going to end? No, no, no yeah. just keeps going. All right, we'll get back to that another time. We'll go to the next link. <laughs> so I've got one more thing to mention, which is, um, oh, breaking news, just as we, uh, before we did this. Trustee of the transgender charity Mermaids quits over speech to pedophile group. Colour me shocked? Well, imagine my... Someone play it. <laughs> <laughs> someone edit that in, please. Imagine my shock. <laughs> Dr. Jacob Breslau was a graduate student in gender research. There's never been I... any association with nonces in that field. The London School of Economics he studied. Right? Um, so he's, he's a professional loser. And he gave a speech at an event for US-based group B4U-ACT in 2011. According to its website, B4U promotes services and resources quote, for self-identified individuals who are sexually attracted to children. Right. Uh, yeah, so uh, a paedophile group. Nonce defenders. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> not even hiding it anymore. Breslau's presentation appeared to be a critique of how paedophiles are understood. Records show that the academic, who is now an assistant professor of gender at sexuality at the London School of Economics, you have kids at the London School of Economics. Um, Remove them. I, <laughs> I'd be worried. But he became a trustee of Mermaids, a transgender youth support charity in July this year because he wanted to help the youth. He wanted to be near children for unrelated reasons. After the Times approached Mermaids about Breslau's talk, he tenured his resignation as a trustee, but for some reasons didn't tell them before uh, if they knew they were happy to take him on, although they said they were unaware, which I totally believe. And uh, b for u calls itself a unique collaborative effort between minor attracted people, so children, and paedophiles. That's, that's what they want to 
Make normal. That, that's the new politically correct term for paedophile, yes. Wouldn't want to upset the pedos. And mental health professionals to promote communitarian and understanding between the two groups. I, I don't want communication between pedos and children. Can we, can we go back to the episode of Brass Eye where he just lists all of the terrible names you could call nonces and just start <laughs> bringing those bit, well, no, small bean regarder? Yeah, that's the only one I remember. <laughs> it's such a good one. <laughs> it's such a stupid one. But there we have it. Um, yeah, the Brass Eye reality has come back and it is true. And um, I'm just saying, maybe don't hug me, I'm scared. Got a few points more than they thought they were doing in regards to uh, the gender ideologues, which uh, if you criticise now, suppose you're a terrorist. <laughs> Head of charity ends up noncing children. Scientists say this was the last thing we wanted to happen. <laughs> we must get that man. He really is a sh <laughs> This man has been describing disguising himself as a hospital. No, as, as a school. <laughs> no, no, that's the point, the modern version. It's like oh, he's been yeah. disguising himself as oh, a clinic. <laughs> oh yep. Yeah. Oh boy. Go on, Miss Brass Eye. <laughs> Bloody hell. Alright then. So moving on to Rosier Pastors. Pastures. That was the wrong word. Moving on to rosier pastures, if I can speak properly. Uh, the UK has been going through a little bit of economic turmoil recently after Quasi Quarteng's September 23rd announcement of his mini budget, which the Tories, in a usual display of strength and backbone and fortitude, have immediately U turned on. So let's examine some of this. And just as a disclaimer, I am not a financier. This uh, segment will include a lot of discussion of economics and financial issues, of some of which I've had to acclimatize myself and familiarize myself with quite recently. So if I do get any details wrong, I apologize. I'm just trying to go through the information as best I can. But before we get on to something that, like the Tories, isn't particularly conservative, you should all go check out Carl's recent critique of Jordan Peterson's conservative manifesto. Now, I don't know, have you watched... Uh, Carl's, Carl's critique of it is very good, but have you seen the original manifesto? I've only seen part one. I, I've only seen sections. I haven't seen the whole thing. Yeah. It's not great. It's not great. I wouldn't call it conservative in the slightest. I would call it the classical liberal manifesto, which would have been fine if you just na labeled it that, or even further, the Ayn Rand manifesto. As it kind of came across like an objectivist screed that he was just yelling at the camera, which came across slightly abrasive, wasn't particularly turning me on to the whole idea, all the ideas that he was putting forward, but Carl did a very good critique of that, and you should check that out because I'll be honest, you know, Jordan Peterson, the psychologist, the self help guru, is someone that I can get behind. Jordan Peterson, the political commentator, not for me. Not for me. Don't know about your feelings on it, but not for me. I haven't me. seen the whole thing. So. Fair play. But let's carry on, shall we? So just for a recap of what the mini budget was that Quarteng announced on the 23rd of September, I've got this article from The Guardian. Shockingly enough, it's just going through the general details of that. So I thought, you know, useful article. So Quarteng has said that his statement, the mini budget, will provide the biggest package in generations of tax cuts to send a clear signal that economic growth is the government's priority. It comes on top of plans to freeze household energy bills at £2,500 for a typical household. The Chancellor says that the government was never going to let households uh, face soaring high energy bills caused by Vladimir Putin's war in Ukraine, telling people that help is coming with the rising cost of living. That will be relevant as we go on. You are right there? Yeah, I just, I'm annoyed by the cope endlessly of like, oh, trust me, the war is the only reason we're in this mess. So it's not. Like, every no, graph you see of the energy prices is like skyrocketing and then war in Ukraine and it's going to skyrocket a bit more. I was like, Right. Could, the trend is there already. Could you also say that the, the point where it starts to skyrocket is around the time we started to implement a lot of nonsensical net zero targets? And lockdowns. And lockdowns, yeah. of course. Almost like we've been cutting ourselves off at the knees for a good few years at this point. Because if you're Germany or something where you get all your gas from Russia, of course, this is higher uh, percentage and effect. But in the UK graphs, it's like, no, you guys already caused this problem. Now you're just trying to blame it on Russia. I don't, I don't. I'm not like saying that Russia doesn't have. Yeah, Russia yeah, definitely sorry, it's has. It's a side project, but it's just. Yeah, Russia definitely has an influence on it, but also that we've not been doing ourselves get any favors at, at all. But the uh, 45% additional income rate tax ban for those earning more than £150,000 uh, will be scrapped entirely. That was one of the big ones, the one of the first uh, one of the first ones in his speech, the income tax cuts. And for those in America, uh, we know that you guys and the leftists in your country like to brag that you've actually got one of the most progressive tax rates in the entire world, or at least your federal tax. We've got it worse. 
I think in America, I was looking into it the other day, it's like something like $530,000 will get you a federal tax rate of 37%. In the UK, £150,000 will get you a tax rate of 45%, which means the government is going to be stealing about half of every paycheck, about all of your in, uh, half of your income. But they were going to scrap that entirely and retain the 40% higher rate, which only begins at incomes of £50,000 and £50,271, which is still a ridiculously high tax rate for a relatively low income bracket, as far as I'm concerned. Are you right there? I, whilst you were talking, just looked up highest tax rates in Europe. Uh, Hungary, 33% is the highest tax rate. That's it. Yeah. That's... Anyway. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hungarian's yes. too hard to learn anyway. Right. Yeah, so uh, the Chancellor also said that he would bring forward a cut in the basic rate of income from 20% to 19% in April 2023. Yes. Are you ready to feel that 1% tax cut, Callum? I'm feeling you... it already, man. Oh, I'm, getting... I'm, I'm already eyeing up some Lamborghinis myself. Wait, hang on a minute. Didn't they put up national insurance by 1.25? I think they're also planning on scrapping that. Oh, oh, thank God. Yes, so maybe you'll be able to retain about 1% more of your money. Maybe. If they decide not to U-turn on that as well. Oh, no, I'll be starting a small business with that money. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be saving up for my mansion in the hills. Oh, yeah. Quarteng also confirmed that the banker's bonus cap would be scrapped to reaffirm the UK's status as a leading financial centre. So hopefully you can already pick up a lot of these measures seem to be aimed with the intention of bringing business over to the UK, making it a more business-friendly country. Because, you know, if you bring your business over to the UK and you're getting taxed a lot and you're getting your banker's bonus or whatever capped off you're not going to want to bring your uh, business over here what the success of that is yet to be seen but that is what they are intending quarteng also says next year's increasing corporation tax from 19 to 25 percent will be cancelled and will remain at 19 percent we will have the lowest rate of corporation tax in the g20 reversing the tax rise they say will put 19 billion pounds a year back into the economy. Stamp duty, cut for property buyers in England and Northern Ireland, and in the current system, there is no stamp duty to play on the first £125,000 of a property's value. It will be then doubled to £250,000. So just generally, the sorts of things that people want, kind of easy wins, tax cuts, not particularly great tax cuts for those of us who are on the lower tax bands, and if you're earning between fifty and £150,000, I guess screw you, you don't get your tax cut, we still get to take 40% of your income. But that's generally what they've been doing, and Quarteng has been saying that the government will bring forward measures to streamline regulations and remove EU-derived laws as well. Chancellor confirms almost 40 investment zones will be created with tax breaks for businesses. So, yeah, trying to make the country a better place for business and investment. A lot of people were, however, focusing almost entirely on the abolition of the upper tax bans for people. A lot of people, especially Guardian readers, were calling it tax cuts for the rich. Oh, this is going to be trickle-down economics. Yada, 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 yada. A lot of people just were very angry about that, and that seems to have upset the government. Because the government don't like people saying bad things about them. But the reason that a lot of people get annoyed at this isn't necessarily, as they always say, it's not because they love the poor, it's because they hate the rich. In fact, my missus yeah. got into an argument. I think I've mentioned this in the office. I don't know if you overheard yesterday. My missus over the weekend got into an argument with someone on Facebook because she's heard me enough around the flat just angrily muttering to myself about these sorts of things that she seems to have internalized some Picking of it. Picking up the Mises Institute by muttering. <laughs> yes, she's been overhearing me listening to Hopper. Uh, but she was, she saw someone, a friend of ours, posting that just tax the rich. It's just that simple. Just that simple. As if you tax the rich... As all of their money, you won't scare them off to a tax haven or something. It'll just solve every problem. It'll fix my broken marriage if we just tax the rich. And she just commented underneath it saying, actually, that won't fix anything and gave a few reasons to why. And he responded to that with, but it will make me feel better. Yeah, that, that's I mean, that's beautifully mask off. That's all it really is about. It's just about, I hate the rich, I don't want them to be more successful with me, confiscate all the money, and then I'll feel better. I'll just tax everyone 100%, because that'll be communism, and it'll make him feel better. Yeah, it'll make him feel better. Uh, but there were some actual genuine effects, very negative effects, after the announcement of this mini-budget. For instance, if we look here, we can already see that the value of the British pound has been 
steadily decreasing for a while. I wonder if it's anything to do with all of that money we've been pumping into the system constantly. But if you go to, if you just hover over the end of it where it really takes a dip, you can see that that was at around the time when he gave that speech, that it suddenly went from just gradually dropping, well, not even gradually, just steeply declining to just falling off of a cliff. And then it starts to rebound a bit from the 27th and the 28th of September onwards. And there will be a reason for that that I will explain that I do not think will be an actual um, long-term solution to these problems, shall we say, because the drop in the value of the British pound caused a lot of after effects that have caused a lot of problems and a lot of worry for people in financial sectors and a lot of people's investments and a lot of people's pensions, which I will get onto in a moment. Before I do, though, I should probably give some background information because I had to familiarize myself with a lot of this. And I think for those of you who are watching this who aren't informed, uh, might want might find this useful for me to go over some of this information now on gilts and yields. For those of you watching from America, gilts are the UK equivalent of bonds. They are just bonds, bonds that the government issues. And uh, I've got some information here that I'll just read out. So when a country borrows money, it issues bonds, which global investors buy in exchange for regular and reliable income from the issuing nation. When they issue the bonds and they just get them bought, that in, uh, gives a nice influx of money into the government that they can spend on public services and such. But then when eventually it comes to the point where you have to pay back those loans, that's when you start to have to print the money or just make the money poof, out of nowhere. So it always comes back to bite people. Period uh, periodic interest payments called coupons. The bonds are issued at a price known as par, for example, £100. Set coupon paid over their duration and the initial capital invested repaid at the end. These bonds will then be traded on secondary markets and their price can rise or fall above or below their par value. Price of a bond has an inverse relationship to the yield paid. When bonds are out of favor and trade below par price, the buyer is purchasing the coupon payments at a discount and so yield rises and vice versa. If bonds are in high demand, they may trade above. So for example, they give here a £1,000 face value bond with a 2% coupon will pay £20 a year, a yield of 2%. But if it's on the market for a lower price, for instance, £500, obviously half of the face value, and you're still getting that £20 a year, the yield is 4%. So you're getting a higher return of investment for all it. Very, very simple stuff. And in essence, the bank, um, <laughs> well, I'll get onto that in a moment. So it carries on. The Financial Times have this article, how Quasi Quarteng's mini budget broke the UK bond market because that massive crash that we saw in the British pound was not good for the bond market and has some very, very nasty side effects. And the reason that the pound did crash after that was because of the fact that tax cuts were going on while the government is try uh, still trying to implement the energy price cap for households across the UK, which will cost billions and billions of pounds because what they're doing is they're taking the market price that the energy companies would be paying, would be charging the customers actually, and they're making up the difference so that consumers and citizens across the UK don't have to pay exorbitant prices, which will of course cost billions. So to fund that, they're going to have to make more pay, uh, make more borrow, uh, sorry, borrow more money. And then the worry on the financial markets, the global markets, is that if they're cutting taxes, borrowing more money, they will be unable to pay that money back. So therefore the pound is devalued. All nice and simple, you following me? Because it's a bit complicated. I don't want to get a bit lost in the weeds. But it caused the pound to drop and the UK bond market has almost crashed with it. Five days after the mini budget announced, the Bank of England decided to step in and prevent chaotic drops in gilts prices from stinging pension funds and threatening financial stability. A route that began with Quarteng's package of energy subsidies and tax cuts had threatened to snowball out of control as a £1.7 trillion slice of the UK's pension sector, which dominates the market for long-term government debt, struggled to cope with the unprecedented rise in bond yields because as a result of all of the pound dropping, all of a sudden all of these gilts were being sold off and people, the value of them was dropping, which was rising the yields. The strategies that many pension schemes used to uh, shield retirees from inflation and interest rate risks were buckling under the strain. And on Wednesday, with the turmoil at pension funds feeding a self-fulfilling downward spiral in gilt prices, the Bank of England halted plans to sell its bond holdings because the Bank of England had recently said that they were going to tighten up and do what's called quantitative tightening to make sure that money is tighter so that they're not being stung as much by inflation. And they've just reversed that entirely and instead announced bond purchases at a pace of up to 
five billion pounds a day for 13 days to restore order. So 65 billion pounds in 13 days of quantitative easing. This is printing money. And we and all. This is meant to make things better. How? Uh, because, <laughs> well, what, what, what it is, uh. it's incredibly short term thinking. You know, in the, at the end of the day, Quasi Quarteng's mini budget did have some pretty disastrous short term effects. But in the long term, I think it probably would have done some good for the country in attracting business over and then building up tax revenues by having, you know, a smaller tax band, yes. But if you've got more people paying in money to that, then you'll get more money overall. Very simple, logical stuff. But no, we can't have the, uh, the market crash for even a single day because otherwise it will reveal that the entire financial system that the West is built off of is made up of paper mache and matchsticks, as far as I can tell. The more you start to look into this stuff, the more that you realize that the entire financial sector is just fraud. As far as I'm concerned, the whole thing is one fraud after another. Carrying on, though. Gilt prices immediately staged a rally, spurring the biggest ever one-day drop in 30-year yields from 5.06%, the highest in two decades, to 4.01%. In the days before the mini-budget, they stood at about 3.8%. A further blow came over the weekend as the Chancellor shrugged off an ugly market reaction to promise even larger tax cuts in the future, deepening the bond sellout and sanding the pound sinking to an all-time low against the dollar at the start of the week. And I think that was actually kind of promising almost that, you know, he was saying, OK, here's these tax cuts for the people in the top uh, top brackets. I promise there will be further tax cuts because I don't think anybody would anybody other than the financiers who freak out and bet all of our money on this stuff and basically bet the stability of our markets on this are going to say no to a tax cut. I wouldn't say no to a tax cut. You wouldn't say no to a tax cut. Jeremy Pro Corbyn wouldn't say no to a tax cut. Well, he wouldn't publicly. No, but remember when someone asked him, okay, well, you can pay high taxes, just write a check. They refused to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. A further blow came over the weekend as the Chancellor shrugged off an ugly market reaction to promise even... Oh, that, I just went off on that part. Mortgage rates have shot higher, but it was strains at UK pension funds that forced the Bank of England's hand because they had to raise the bank rates, the interest rates in the UK, meaning that people's mortgages and other such loans were negatively affected. But at the same time, it's actually a good thing to encourage more savings. If you get more of an interest rate from saving your money, then there's more incentive to do so. In the long term, cheaper bonds and higher yields are good for pension funds because they help them harvest returns for retirees. But in the short term, soaring yields meant that thousands of pension funds face urgent demands for additional funds from investment managers to satisfy margin calls relating to hedging strategies. And I've gone on to Investopedia and uh, just to explain what a margin call is, it occurs when a percentage of an investor's equity in a margin account falls below the broker's required amount, at which point the broker demands that they sell off a bunch of assets so that they can retain the equity split. So it basically just means that people would have had to sell off a lot of stuff. And it turns out that what has been happening in the pension funds um, side of the finance market for a very long time is all of those money, all of that money that people have been putting into their pensions uh, hasn't been invested wisely. It's basically been used as collateral for incredibly risky loans and investments. Because what so they... business as usual. Yes, it's business as usual. Uh, what has happened is it turns out that when the pensions were set up, it was set up at a time period where people were expected to die about five years after they retired anyway. And now we're not in that time period anymore. We're at a period where people can retire and on average live 10 to, 10 to 20 years after. So all of a sudden, everybody realized that the pensions were massively underfunded for the actual amount of use that they were expected to get. And therefore, they started putting them into these risky collateral loans to try and raise a bit more money. Except the second that the system receives a shock on that, everything comes falling apart. And as a result, the pensions watchdog has been called into emergency talks on UK market turmoil. Pensions regulator is, for the first time, has been drafted into a high-level emergency talks led by the Treasury and Bank of England as they examine measures to calm financial markets in the wake of the meltdown, which covered followed quasi quartangs mini-budget. Mini Don't you love that every single time a big financial problem occurs, the people who set up the committees to fix it are the people who caused all the problems in the first place. The pensions regulator, who, despite being the regulator, must have approved all of these incredibly risky loans done with people's pension funds. The Treasury, which has been very eager to print a lot of money over lockdown. And the Bank of England, who are more than happy to print all of that money for the government. These are the people that we want solving our financial woes, wouldn't you agree? 
The watchdog, which oversees the £1.5 trillion pen uh, pension sector, is understood to have been summoned into a closed-door meeting with the authorities' response framework, ARF, which, uh, which are triggered when an incident of threat could cause major disruption to the financial services in the UK. It's understood that this is the first time they've taken part. Experts say that the options likely to be considered to the forum include the creation of a backstop fund controlled by the Bank of England, I'm sure they'll do a fantastic job, to cover larger than expect expected collateral calls, a ban on the use of risky financial products that have been blamed for magnifying last week's crisis, is also being examined. Does this not remind you of... Uh, Thomas Sowell talking about Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae allowing a lot of incredibly high-risk loans to go out for people who are buying first-time houses, which ended up collapsing the housing market, which ended up collapsing a lot more than just that. To be honest, it sounds like every single economic it, collapse. It, it really does, doesn't it? Um, but those fire sale, uh, they carry on these products known as the Liability Driven Investments, or LDIs, which having looked into them online, is very, very difficult to get any actual... Um, concrete details on what these involve. A lot of the YouTube uh, videos I try to watch that explain them are mainly just jargon that is purposefully difficult to understand. So I can't really go too much into more detail about that. Uh, they have been widely used by most final salary pension funds managing the more than uh, 1.5 trillion in savings to help hedge against the swings in value of some of their other investments. However, a plunge in the pound collapse in UK bond prices triggers calls on funds managers to provide more collateral on these complex contracts, meaning they had to sell assets to come up with cash at a short notice. But those fire sales further depressed prices, causing more volatility in the value of their assets. That in turn triggered larger collateral calls, sparking a much feared doom loop and creating concern about a drain on pension fund assets. Fantastic. Fantastic. And the people who caused all this are the people now brought in to solve the problem. Wonderful. Wonderful. Can't wait. And as we carry on, as I mentioned earlier, the Conservatives gave in to pressure, gave in to the lefties, and gave in to their buddies in the financial sector, and just immediately U-turned on something they announced slightly over a week ago. He confirmed, Quartain confirmed the move to scrap the 45% tax rate was being abandoned following more than a week of criticism, which is just pathetic. The whole system is built with paper mache and toothpicks, as I said, so, I mean, this is going to happen every single time someone tries to do anything to remotely try and change the system whatsoever. It's going to happen eventually. It's going to happen sooner or later. This is the fact of the matter, and uh, they were too uh, too cowardly to just stick by their convictions and stick by their principles. Mr. Quarteng had announced the U-turn on Monday morning, saying it had become a distraction from our overriding mission to tackle the challenges facing our country, and as a result, I'm announcing we are not proceeding with the abolition of the 45% tax rate. We get it, and we have listened. Other Tories have also been revolting against the tax plans, with Grant Schraps and Michael Gove criticising the cults. Oh no! Not the imposing, terrifying figure of Michael Gove leaning over your shoulder. Just throw him out of the party at this point. Honestly, he's an embarrassment. Half of the Tory party is an embarrassment, and I would throw them out if I was, <laughs> if I was leader, personally, but that's just me. The U-turn on the 45% will be seen as a massive blow to the authority of the new Prime Minister and, channel, uh, and Chancellor. Yes, you look pathetic. You look weak and you look stupid. And as a result of all of this, Liz Truss is now facing a full-scale Tory revolt. As, a, as this Mirror article says, she plots to cut benefits for the poor. Ooh, cutting benefits for the poor. Don't you want to hate the evil Tories because they just hate the poor? Prime Minister is looking at cancelling a vow to raise welfare by inflation of about 10% next April instead of using earnings growth of just over 5%. So we're still raising benefits just not as much as whiny lefties would like. But and, they want it 100%, so it's just... Like... Yeah, and therefore, the Tories, the Conservative Party, have to revolt against the one person, the one leader, who, as much as Liz Truss is embarrassing, seems to at least be taking relatively conservative advice from her advisors. Did I tell you what the Labour Party advice on this all was? I ever heard at a conference? Um, tax the rich 100%, redistribute it to the poor. No, it was even more big-brained. It was the, if you increase benefits, you increase the economy. Oh, yes. Because, you know, there's more money in the system. So if we just increase benefits ad infinitum, the economy will just keep growing until we're as large as China. Yeah, if we just, if we just keep printing money over and over again, we'll just have more money. What could go wrong? Sounds I mean, once, genius once to me. Once we're all billionaires, what could, what's, what's wrong with that? 
I, the, absolute brain. Yeah, just like Zimbabwe. They were all trillionaires, don't you know? They were all very rich and everything went well there, didn't it? So, but yes, as long with, uh, along with that now, we've got Penny Mordant, Michael Gove, and lots and lots of others who are all lining up against her. And as far as I'm concerned, the Tories are not a real party. They are a den of infighting, of upper-class eaten toffs. There is no confidence to be had in them. Maybe Truss and Quarteng could maybe try sticking to their convictions next time, if they get a next time, but here they've obviously and clearly failed. So that will move on to someone who's at least winning. Kanye is always winning. Sorry, I don't, I don't want to misname him, Ye. Does he actually go by Ye? He had it legally changed to Y-E, pronounced Ye. Genius. Anyway. Big brain. So, Ye <laughs> comes out as uh, white. He has decided he is a white man now. You may think that he uh, officially declared himself a white man in the eyes of the left when he said slavery was a choice, but uh, we'll get back to that another time. And instead, look at the big news, which is that he's worn a shirt. The shirt has a wrong thing on it. Did the shirt assault somebody? No, it says white lives matter, which um, is, is basically like... An uncontroversial statement. It's like that that, that scene where John McClane is walking around with that uh, sandwich <laughs> oh, <yeah>. board. <laughs> Wait, so, you've seen a Die Hard movie? I've seen all the Die Hard movies. Oh, that's all right then. Yeah, it's like Die Hard. Uh, even I've not watched all of them because the last one was bloody awful. Oh, speaking of uh, terrible German ideas. So if you'd like to go and check out something on lowseers.com, got to show something. So it'll be the origins of intersectionality, of course, that we did together, me and Carl. And uh, it's very relevant to why people are so screechworthy about uh, Kanye West wearing a shirt that has a wrong thing on it. And I suppose we'll go to the, the first link, which tells us conservative pundit Candace Owens was also present and wearing one of those racist shirts. Don't give you an image of the shirt, they just give you a random image of Kanye just, West. The, just don't, don't look at the shirt. With a gum shield in? Yep. Don't know what the okay. shirt was, don't worry about it. <laughs> they've just, made, they've just <laughs> taken 